Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and welcome to Unreal Christmas in February. Yes, first Tuesday of every month, Epic Games gives away uh, five free assets for you. They're yours to keep forever, as long as you, air quotes, buy them before the first Tuesday of the next month. And we've jumped right in with the first asset here. This is the stylized modular crystal mine asset. We're actually going to go hands-on with four out of five. One of them is an engine plugin, so I'll show you that later on. Let me just go into uh, game mode here so we get the widgets all gone. This one is pretty straightforward. It's a stylized environment. Um, for crystal mines. It looks a bit like World of Warcraft style. Uh, everything you see here. The cool thing here is these, like these rails right here, there's actually controlled by a blueprint or generation can be controlled by a blueprint. Also on top of that, uh, there's a few other things that like chains that are blueprint driven as well. Uh, the mine, you see all the various different things to go here. You've got the tracks, you've got the carts, barrels, the various different crystals. And then we get into the larger part of the mine over here and we have just a large open vista area. And this actually kind of reminds me, I think it's Dark Souls 2, uh, Seth or Seath the Scaleless, kind of reminds me of his level a little bit, just in that World of Warcraft style. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first asset. Pretty straightforward. Let's go take a look at the overview of it, get an idea of the assets that you're getting in this pack. So going from one end to the other, here you have a giant crystal, some random rocks, procedural foliage volume generation for the various different crystals. Uh, we have a sky sphere blueprint here. You can see spline controlled rails and then uh, chains as well. So some of these things are blueprint driven, which is kind of cool. A variety of crystals and rocks with crystals growing out of them. Uh, then we have carts, we have an animated waterfall, and then we have the various different mine pieces. And then a couple of particle systems down over here for fire and uh, FX hanging particle system. So that is an overview of the asset. That is the uh, stylized modular crystal mine. Now let us move on. We're going to go on to the other major interior pack, and that is the fantasy interior. Um, so this one is semi stylized, semi realistic. Just. All right, go away. There it is. All right. So one thing you want to point out for both of these, though, uh, I'm using Unreal Engine 5. Whoa, my screen. Scroll is very fast. I'm using Unreal Engine 5.3, and the default was so incredibly bloomed out. So what you're going to want to do uh, to get it, so you can see some of it still right here. They've changed the lighting situation in 5.3. So if you're using 5.3 and this is hard to see, I uh, just come down and look for uh, post processing volume. So just post process volume and just change it on here. It's going to probably be a combination of the exposure value being too high, the minimum brightness or maximum brightness being a little bit off, or possibly bloom settings. So just be aware, you may have to tweak it slightly in Unreal Engine 5.2. They changed the lighting model, and it's definitely had an effect on things. But yeah, this is the fantasy interior environment. Everything you see here to create, I don't know, it looks like a pretty typical British kitchen. <laughs> uh, so yeah, all kinds of things. Got a chest. This is an interior only, by the way. And I don't know that I would say fantasy, more like medieval, like this is more clutter. Uh, so you got things like cauldrons and fireplaces and so on. We have this upstairs that doesn't exist, but everything you see here to create this environment, I'm like just turn it on into just preview mode, seeing an idea of what you're dealing with here. Once again, there is an overview map. Let's go take a look at the assets that compose this guy. All right, here, so we got tables, we got various different cloths and so on, the... Um, the shelves, the, the chests, fireplace, hearth, and got some nice animations around the charcoals there, and then a bunch of things. So even if you're not creating in a medieval style game, it might be an asset you need here, especially if you need exceptionally large forks, spoons, or ladles. Uh, they got you covered here. So that is the contents of this particular bundle. Nothing extraordinary, but nice quality work nonetheless. Somewhere in between that stylized and real. I don't know. Would you call this realistic or would you call this stylized? I'm not really sure. Some of it definitely looks realistic, but some of the saturation looks a little stylized. So that is the uh, second thing there. The third one has a bit of a strange name. It is called the building system. And let me just go ahead and, oops, oh, need to open the map. All right. So this is a way of controlling uh, objects in the scene. Uh, so let me, all right, how do I get this dock to just automatically go away? That's very annoying. So what you see here, you got some actors you can play with. So um, you can have things snap to each other, snap to the wall, rotate around and so on. Let me just go ahead and play this and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So over here we have... Uh, an actor. The instructions are over there, by the way. So E, I can interact with that object, and then we started moving around. So if you need to place things in the world, so you got things like rotation here, or rotation... Oh, I guess it's because I'm holding down. 
E interact and rotate right. Okay, well, it's not doing so. Uh, and then I can snap things back to their original position here. Then we have another object here that you can have snapping points to other snapping points. So this one, the opacity spheres indicate snappable points. And these are some snappable objects. So what I'm gonna do is hit E, grab one of these objects. And then what I can do is you see as I mouse over, it automatically snaps to that point. And then I could, I could uh, I think it's left click to commit. Right, so, so I could grab this other object in here and bring it back and we can place it like so. Then we have this other guy right here. This guy has got snapping to the wall. So as I see, doesn't do anything. Red, red, red won't work. Other object will work, but here, snap to the wall. And then of course we could do it, grab it. So like so, and then you can rotate and place it. So if you wanted to do like a, you know, um, Fallout 4 style base building and you needed the, the abilities to, to work with these things, that is what this is all about. So again, you wanna snap things onto a wall, you can snap things onto a wall. You want to rotate them, you can rotate them. You want to put them back to their original position, you can put them back to their old position by clicking X, although for some reason this one is not doing that right now. So anyways, that is it. This is called the uh, replicated building system. Uh, so building system was a little bit unintuitive exactly what it's all about, but it's an object placement scene uh, system, and that's pretty much what this guy is all about. And the final one is, at least that I'm going to demonstrate hands-on, is this CRT, and it's actually kind of cool. So let's open up the sample map on this guy, and this is for doing a wide variety of effects. I'll show you them in the level in a second. There is a preview version of this, an app, but it's also got this example of what it does doing over the, the view itself. So like the static and so on, it makes it kind of annoying to look at. So this does give you an idea of the kind of effect that you can create with this guy. So if you want to recreate the VHS, uh, you know, 1980s, early 90s kind of uh, granularity, you can do so here, but you can see some direct examples over here. Uh, so for example, here, we've got a 320 by 224 with Art of Fighting. So you got that CRT like effect going. This is what it capable of doing that. Here you can see Prince of Persia 2 effect. Here you can see uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, the original one, the effect. Uh, a 640 by 480 MS-DOS screen effect. And it's it's very good looking. So it, it does replicate how crap monitors used to be back in the day. And then we got some generic TV patterns going on and like um, static noise, test patterns, and so on. So if you're looking to do that CRT style effect, and you see we're actually walking through one. And that's actually kind of cool. So we're in a a post-process area and you can see this is how it would apply to the camera like so so if you're looking to create this sort of effect or you're doing like a security camera inside your scene that is what this guy is all about again a bit of a specialist item but pretty cool on the whole and yeah that is this month's free stuff plus one more let's head on over and we will check them all out so we got the stylized modular crystal caves uh mine the way you get these things basically log into your account Add it to your cart, check it out. It hasn't actually started yet now. This should be set to $0 when you see it. Uh, you can also get to these via free, free for this month, and they will all be there as well. Uh, so we've got the fantasy interior environment. All right, so we have the replicated building system. This is for you know placing objects relative to other objects in your game world. Uh, this is done, I believe, through blueprints. Yeah, nine different blueprints for handling that one. Uh, then we've got the advanced CRT, CRT TV. Uh, VCR and VHS effects, which we literally just saw in action. And then the final thing, which is an engine plugin, is stats and achievement integration. And I'm going to stop for a second and harp on Epic Game Store because everybody does this. What you're going to notice here is they can't handle ampersands in the description here. So like this, HTML encoded ampersands do not work in the summary here. And even more sad, if I actually minimize this, they don't work in the title here either. That, that's just lazy. Uh, so anyways, if you're wondering what this one's all about, it's for integrating into your Steam um, Steamworks API. So if you want to get stats, etc., cetera, uh, you can hook this guy in. Uh, it's implemented as two blueprints and eight C++ classes. Um, it's safe to use on a client, unlike web API. The plugin will uh, not function properly without correct setup, uh, but basically features include downloading user stats and achievement data from Steam servers, uploading user stats and achievement data uh, I'm assuming to the Steam servers, uh, displaying achievement and unlock progress and much, much more. So if you wanna work with uh, Steamworks, that's basically what this provides, an idea of the kind of stuff it's capable of and the blueprints for actually controlling it if you wish to, to use it and drive it with blueprints. So if you're trying to integrate with Steam API, that's what stats and achievement integration is all about. And that is this month's three stuff. So stats and achievement integration, stylized modular crystal mine, fantasy interior environment, 
the replicating system, and the advanced CRT, TV, VCR, VHS effects. What do you think of this month's free stuff? Once again, same question as always. Even if you aren't using Unreal Engine stuff, are you hoarding these? I really hope you're hoarding these. So if you ever decide to change your mind later on, you can. Also, there are ways to get these out of Unreal Engine and other, into other game engines. I will link those as well. So if you want to see how to get Unreal Engine stuff working in uh, Unity or Godot, there are ways. Uh, so even if you're not using Unreal, you should be hiring. You should be just basically just each month grab these things. But what do you think of this month's free stuff? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. And happy Unreal Miss. Uh, talk to you later. Goodbye.